final matchups. Thank you very much, Dash, and the rest of the analyst desk. I'm joined by Jet and Monte Cristo as we'll break down the matchups. But as the competition dies down here at Le Doc Pullman, we are about to take the next step on the road to the Summoner's Cup. As we speak, the final preparations are being made on stage for the quarterfinal bracket draw live. Before we send it to Shox and O Gaming's Noir, a very quick rundown on how things are going to play out. The number one seeds will be drawn and placed into the quarterfinals in the bracket. Then the number two seeds will be drawn. They'll be placed into the respective matchups. But the only rule is no teams from the same group can be placed into the same half of the bracket. So if a team from, say, Group A is drawn to the top half, the second team from Group A must go into the bottom half. Yep. It's pretty simple. Let's find out how that is going to play out. And we will, of course, be getting to that draw in just a second. The stage is set. So let's send this over to Shucks and Noir to find out how the matchups for the 2015 quarterfinals will play out. Et ça y est, on y est au dénouement de ces deux superbes semaines avec le tirage au sort. Est-ce que vous vous êtes bien amusé Je serai avec Shox et Diamond viendra nous accompagner. Now, I believe Shox and Noir are in fact explaining to the audience in house the exact same rules that we've just run through. Talking about, of course, all the pool one teams and pool two teams and how they're going to get drawn out. Gentlemen, this is quite an exciting time for both us as well as all the teams. They all have representatives and captains on the floor who will then be, you know, accepting the draw on behalf of their teams. And Diamond's going to be doing the drawing. It's a nice surprise. The last time a European player drew for European teams, it didn't end well. <laughs> With Froggen. Froggen. Oh, yes. oh yeah, Froggen uh, didn't do them any favors, and this is going to be, it looks like, KT. And it is KT Rolster, so they will KT. fit into the very first slot. KT, of course, the number one seed from Group D, which means Origin will know they will be on the bottom half of the bracket. So really nothing fully revealed yet. We're going to learn a lot when they draw the next ball, though. I'm sure they're a little relieved about that, but it still opens up the chance for them to hit Fnatic uh, right now. Which could guarantee a European team into the semis. Not really sure how I feel about that, Monty. <laughs> well, there's Fnatic. So much for the Fnatic origin matchup. So much indeed. So, both European teams on either side of the bracket. Yeah, Fnatic KT Rolsh is going to be incredibly entertaining. Fnatic really came on strong at the end of the group stage, but so did KT Rolster. Yeah, sets up a possible very good semifinal. Also means that we will not have KT and SKT on the same side of the bracket. All right, so Flash Wolves, the number one seed Flash from Group A means that Ku Tigers will be in the top half. So we could see Korea on Korea or Ku versus Fnatic. So we'll get to those in just a second. <laughs> and this is... It's not very exciting anymore. Yeah. Just KT. So, <laughs> Spoiler. <came> from Group A. <laughs> okay, now we're Well, we do need to do it for... Uh, you know, just to confirm, of course, that all four teams were in the pool. I'm impressed with... Oh. Well, we, we can never miss a chance to see Diamond grabbing balls, so... <laughs> there you go, SK Telecom, T1. So, unfortunately for Flash Wolves, who are four-fifths the Gamania Bears, who lost to SK Telecom in the quarterfinals <laughs> of the 2013 World Championship, <laughs> they get to face them again. <laughs> right, now this is where things get interesting. As a reminder, the number two seeds will be drawn. The only rule, if you draw into a position where a team from your group is already in that half of the bracket, you get bumped. So those were... It should be the first opponent KT rolls. All right. On the right. assumption... So, sorry about that. I was operating on a strange assumption. Those are all the number one seeds. Correct. So those are number not one the seeds. matchups whatsoever. Correct. Number one seeds. They have now populated the left-hand side of the matchup. Diamond? And obviously preferential uh, side choice. And the first number two seed. Let's find out who this is going to be. 
And that's going to be the Koo Tigers. Yeah. They are color coded, which means yeah, yeah. that should be a KT Rolsta versus Koo yep. Tigers matchup. So we'll see a Korean matchup. And this is going to be a rematch of what we saw actually in the playoffs, which is a five game series between Koo and KT Rolsta. That is extremely interesting to see Korea pulling Korea back with SKT on the bottom half of the bracket and a guaranteed Korean team in the semifinals up top. This could set us up for an early Korea v Korea final. But we are getting well ahead of ourselves as the next Origin. The next matchups have to get drawn. It is Origin from D2. Now, of course, they will not be able to be in the top half of the bracket, so they get bounced to the Flash Wolves. Wow, what a great draw for Origin here. Absolutely fantastic. They should be a heavy favorite going into that match. And of course, the reason for that, KT Rolster was in the top half of the bracket, the first seed from that group, which is why Origin then bounced. So the last two teams available for selection here are AHQ and EDG, both of which can face, no, I'm lying to you, Fnatic. Fnatic has to face EDG. Has to face EDG. What a tough challenge. Let's see who we're drawing here. It will be the EDG It will be draw. EDG. That's difficult, Jack. That is really tough. Now that I'm correctly understanding the way the brackets are being fallen, <laughs> it'll be exciting to watch Fnatic versus EDG right here because EDG has underperformed. Remember, the only LPL team to make it out of the group stage when I was heavily rating the Chinese teams to all advance out of the group stage. So they've heavily underperformed to this point, and now it'll be a fascinating matchup between Fnatic and them. It does mean, of course, our last matchup will be HQ versus SK Telecom. What a difficult... I mean, for AHQ looking at the draw, even if they'd won the group, theoretically speaking, they would have faced EDG if the draws had held true. They have just won the only tiebreaker match, and now Westor takes to the stage, standing next to his opponent, Clear Love and EDG. Well... Yeah, that is, that is a terrifying matchup for AHQ. They came out very strong today, with an incredibly close game against Fnatic. They're going to be kicking themselves if they didn't win that game. You know, honestly, the top half of the bracket is significantly harder than the bottom half right now. SK Telecom, I feel, would have to make a lot of errors not to make the finals with this bottom bracket. I think that's a good thing, though. If you take a lot of the stronger teams in one half of the bracket, in theory, it sets us up for the legitimate strongest set and seed team to actually face what we assume could be SKT. So it ends up being quite exciting when you think about some of the possibilities. You can see it on your screen. KT Rolster versus Koo Tigers, Korea v Korea. Fnatic taking on Edward Gaming, Europe versus China. Flash Wolves versus Origin. LMS versus EU. And then, of course, SK Telecom, the tournament favorites, taking on AHQ Korea versus LMS in London next week. I'm just hoping that we get a great finals this year. We've yet to wait. really have a great World Championship finals, and this is a bracket that can deliver that. French crowd are definitely calling their quarterfinal champions in here. Absolutely nobody's left for the draw, which is fantastic. And the crowd has just been so loud all weekend long. You had to see the bracket draw. You had to see who was going to get SKT. You had to see how the European teams are going to be placing, especially for the Parisian crowd here. And I honestly think if you're looking at the European teams, they got a pretty good draw overall. EDG was actually looking pretty weak in their group. They lost substantially to SKT, and I think they're vulnerable. And Flash Wolves would have been probably the weakest number one seed out of all the groups. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, coming in here, and, you know, KT Rolls versus Koo, this is a matchup we saw like about a month ago in the playoffs. So something we're actually going to be seeing again here, which is very exciting yeah. uh, because it really was a close series last time around. Yeah, when all five games, I'm personally looking forward to see if it goes all five games again to not see it decided by blind pick. I know there's people out there that love blind I pick. I love blind pick, Jet. <laughs> people out there like Monte Cristo who love blind pick, but I much prefer the draft phase in the most important match. I hope it goes five again. Well, we hope all of them go five, and I think it'll be very interesting to see how these teams now prepare for one another because, for example, the KT versus Koo. Koo looked fantastic from their group stage, but was that because their opponents were weaker than originally anticipated or because Koo is legitimately stronger than their regional, uh, you know, precursor had led us to believe? Well, they, they also did have some very disappointing games against the Flash Wolves where they seemed to control the early game, then fell behind because they failed engages on multiple occasions. So they've got to tighten up their game quite a bit, I think, if they want to take on KT at this stage because KT just seemed to go get stronger and stronger as the tournament has progressed. I agree.
And it just feels like when you look at the rest of the bracket, Fnatic versus EDG going to be a very exciting series. That could also be quite a bloodbath, looking at how Fnatic plays. I'm so excited about that one. It, that one gets me really excited. It yes. really depends on which Fnatic team or EDG team ends yeah. up showing up. I think we saw a lot of deep-rooted issues within the LPL teams and how well they were able to prepare with the month off. But now they're kind of warming back up again. EDG has been playing for two full weeks. We saw all the Chinese teams as the tournament progressed look better yeah. and better and Fnatic looked wildly inconsistent because the very first game to the two losses to the running the it, table today it wouldn't be Fnatic I think that's the best quarterfinal it wouldn't be Fnatic if they had if they didn't have some level of inconsistency on their play uh, same can be said to a certain degree for the Flash Wolves and Origin who had opposite weeks where Origin was so good in week one then faltered somewhat week two Flash Wolves all of a sudden show up what, and take the top seed. What really intrigues me about the Flash Wolves is they always seem to play to the level of their opponents. When they're playing up against the Koo Tigers, they look a lot better, yet this is a team that was struggling with pain gaming at times. So can they elevate their play? Will they play to Origins level is my big question because they just up and down, up and down. Yeah, and I really want to see Maple with more Assassin play because if there was a yeah. vulnerability in Origin, it was later in the group, when Peke was still trying to bring Teleport for the global map pressure yeah. and was getting shut down in lane. And the way Maple took over the game specifically against the Koo Tigers on the Blanc, that's the matchup I'm watching. Wow, the last matchup, SK Telecom versus AHQ. The door. The um, door. How will the door perform and the rest of AHQ? Because I felt like they had some of the more obvious weaknesses, I think, when you look at their team and their play style. Yet, they still were not exploited by everybody within the group. That's not going to be a problem I feel SKT will have. However, you know, just how, how, how much of a chance do HQ really have? I'd give them a low chance, mainly because low. We, we say the door, West door, because he is the face of HQ, but he is by no way means the way HQ wins games. Yep. It's on and it's Ziv and it's the bottom lane. And then I'd say their jungler and mid lane are probably the weak points of that team. But SK Telecom is so good at exploiting the specific weaknesses, even within the game, one mistake in the game is over. They are going to exploit that mid lane so potentially hard. Yeah, and it's, it's one thing, but to be able to blind pick Fizz or blind pick TF against certain mid laners, it's another thing entirely to do that against Faker, who will exploit those matchups much more if he sees them coming. Well, we'll have to find out. The quarterfinals, guys, they have been decided. Thank you for joining me for the draw, gentlemen. We're going to head back to the analyst desk to see what they have to say about our world's bracket.